Hi students, welcome to lesson number 45, Social Change in Modern India. Introduction, social change is a prevalent of contemporary life that one may be tempted to suppose that it is peculiarly modern. In our society, changes are bound to come. In some societies, these changes are very slow while in others are rapid and fast. But no society can escape from changes. Social change is the significant alteration of social structure that is the patterns of social action and interactions, including consequences and manifestations of social structures embodied in norms, values and cultural products and symbols. Let us look into the objectives. One, to learn the concept and meaning of social change, 2. To study the approaches of social change, 3. To know the factors of social change, 4. To understand the social change and modernization process in India. Let us look into the concept of social change. Social change is change established patterns of social relations or change in social values or change in structures and subsystems operating in society. Social change may be partial or total. Nationalization of banks, coal mines is examples of partial change in the economic system of society because these coexist with private property, ownership in other spheres, total change hardly ever happens. A few aspects of family system or marriage system or caste system etc may change, but we never find a total change in any of these social systems. Social change is thus always mostly partial. Social change is natural for every society and even if any society makes any attempt to stall social change that shall be impossible task. According to Jones, social change is a term used to describe variations or modifications of any aspect of social processes social patterns, social interactions or social organization. According to Gillen and Gillen, social changes are variations from the accepted modes of life, whether due to alteration in geographical conditions, in cultural equipment, composition of the population or ideologies and whether brought about by diffusion or invention within the group. Social change is the significant alteration of social structures, including consequences and manifestations of such structures embodied in norms, rules of conduct. This encompasses small scale change, cyclical patterns of change such as the succession of centralization and decentralization in administrative organizations and revolutionary change such as overthrow of government. There is no single source of change, but all aspects of social life may at one time or another singly or in combination produce irrevocable change. Methods of studying social change. Social changes cannot be studied in isolation. Each change is only a link in the series of changes which have occurred or likely to occur. Social change should not taken in its present form or of an incident of the present alone. It is connected with the past and affects the future. The changes are influenced by every social happening. As Michael and Page say, to understand how social change takes place and why it follows certain trends, it is necessary to investigate its relation to the three great orders, the biophysical, the cultural and technological. A social change on the whole will change the way of life, pattern of behavior and the very setup of society. Let us look into the goals of social change in India. At the time of political independence of the country, many intellectuals felt that India had failed to modernize itself not because it lacked the wherewithal to develop, but because it had been a victim of capitalist imperialism. The socio-cultural transformation we initiated five decades in 21st century aims at structural changes which could meet the emerging needs and aspirations of people. The social goals were equality, justice, freedom, rationality and individualism. 
The economic goals included distributive justice and economic rationalism in a place of economic theology. The political goals were establishing a political system where the ruler is accountable to the ruled, decentralization of political power and associating more and more people with the decision making processes. Our cultural goal was a change from sacred to secular ideology. The goals set up by our power elite were 1 to create a strong central government. Creating a strong central government was necessary because historically political authority in India has been fragmented. After independence, it was feared that religious, linguistic, caste, tribal, class, etc. forces may further attempt to fragment authority. Strong federal government with some authority to state governments alone would thwart attempts to at such fragmentation. 2. To modernize economy. This was necessary for raising the low per capita income for making the country self-reliant and for having an indigenous capital goods sector which is not dependent on foreign private capital. 3. To create a socialist pattern of society. This was necessary to restrict but not eliminate the role of private capitalist and emphasize public ownership of major industries. 4. To reduce inequalities among caste, regions and classes. To preserve fundamental human rights as such as the right of free speech, right of free religious expression, right of political participation. 5. To establish a society where individuals would be motivated by spirit of selflessness, sacrifice, cooperation and idealism. Let us look into the approaches to the study of social change. In his writings, Yogendra Singh on social change referred to three approaches to the study of nature and process and social change in India. The philosophic, historical and metaphysical approach, historical and political approach and social anthropological and sociological approach. The source for the philosophic historical approach was described as the Indian and the western philosophies. Indian philosophy and religion have proposed a philosophical theory of change characterized by cyclic rhythm in society. The foundation of this theory was belief in karma, dharma and moksha. Social change by the historic political approach is studied through records of Indian history. For example, change in the caste system is studied by systematic analysis of historical records pertaining to different periods. The limitation of this approach lies in the fact that all historical records may not be available or the evidence may not be reliable. The socio-anthropological approach was considered more systematic than the other two approaches. In this approach is intensive field work or participant observation. The theoretical propositions in this approach refer to a body of ethnographic data, either the result of one's own or participant observation, a body of ethnographic data, either the result of one's own or another's field work. Evolutionary approach. In this approach, gradual development is studied from simple to complex form through a long series of small changes. Each change results in a minor modification of the system, but the effect of many changes over a long period of time is the emergence of new complex form. The conflict approach. According to this approach, Economic change produces other changes through the mechanism of conflict between different parts of the social system. The reason behind viewing conflict as the cause of social change is that if there is consensus in society and if various sectors are integrated, there is little pressure for change. The cultural approach. According to this approach, change is studied by analyzing changing cultural elements of society. Within this approach, M. N. Srinivas studied change through Sanskritization and Westernization processes, Robert Redfield through change in little and great traditions. Structural approach. This approach analyzes change in the network of social relationships and in structures like caste, kinship, factory, administrative structures. These social relationships and structures are compared intraculturally as well as cross-culturally. 
Structural analysis of change consists of demonstrating the qualitative nature of new adaptations in the pattern relationships. The integrated approach. According to Yogendra Singh, none of the approaches provides a comprehensive perspective on social change in India. He has integrated a series of concepts relating to social change and developed a new approach or paradigm he calls an integrated approach. In this approach, he integrates 1 direction of change, 2 context of change through macro and micro levels of structures, 3 source of change that is through external or internal sources and 4 substantive domain of phenomena undergoing change that is the culture and social structure. Let us look into the nature and direction of social change in India. Indian society has been described as traditional society till the first quarter of the 20th century. The British government industrializes our country and introduced several economic and social changes, but it could not raise the quality of life of the mass of people. Now let us understand about traditional society. A traditional society is one in which 1. The status of person is determined by birth and is fixed. They do not strive for social mobility. 2. Individual's behavior is governed by customs and ways of behaviors of people vary slightly from generation to generation. 3. Social organization is based on hierarchy. 4. Individual identifies himself with primary group and kinship relations predominate in interaction. 5. Individual is given more importance in social relations than in his position. 6. People are conservative. 7. Economy is simple and economic productivity about subsistence is relatively low and mythical thought predominates society. According to S. C. Dubé and Yogendra Singh are of the opinion that the accepting traditionalism does not mean completely rejecting modernization but it means regulating the forces of modernization. Accepting modernization does not mean rejection of traditionalism, but retaining the elements of traditionalism which are functional for society. Accepting this point of view, it is found that to what extent Indian society continues to be traditional and to what extent it has to become modern. The nature of social change in India, we find the synthesis of tradition and modernity. We have discarded the traditional beliefs, practices and institutions which we believe more dysfunctional and we have imbibed modern values which have created the modern institutions which will help in achieving the basic goal of change in quality of life of the people. Let us look into where India has going towards the modernity. One, we enjoy more individual freedom, we have more opportunity to rise in social scale. 2. We are more rational in discarding traditional social practices or creating new institutional structures. 3. The number of people living below the poverty line has decreased. Our per capita income in real terms has increased. 4. Active higher social status and position of privilege and rank is no longer an illusion for the backward and the low caste people. Resistances to social change. Indian society is changing and certain directions of social change and development are clearly apparent. Yet it is a fact that we have not been able to achieve all those goals which we have wanted to achieve. According to Gunnar Mirdal, the main cause of India's economic weaknesses is not lack of technical skills among the people, but rather lack of initiative, of interest in improving their status and of respect for the labor. Studies in rural India have shown desire of the villagers for improvement. They are willing to work hard, change their harmful customs, eschew temptations and rise above human fallibilities. The impediments to developmental efforts are not human factors, but political environment, social structures and economic handicaps. The forces of traditions. 
societal change is possible only by fostering attitudes of receptivity towards new ways of doing things sticking to one's traditions and refusing to accept new ideas act as a barrier to social change the degree of cultural accumulation and amount of contact with other societies determine the nature and extent of social change within a society in modern society the conditions for change are welcome because they offer solutions to present problems the caste system caste system has been great obstacle in achieving justice and prosperity according to kinsler davis the conception of hereditary occupation is the opposite of the idea of open opportunities free competition and increasing specialization and individual mobility associated with dynamic industrial economy the illiteracy ignorance and fear ignorance caused by illiteracy creates fear which resists social change the customary ways of doing things are considered safe because they have been tried and new is unknown and therefore must be avoided the values indian sociologists view that values influence both individual and collective behavior thereby influencing social processes it was technology and industrialization which were accepted by common people that geographical mobility and consequently social mobility became possible the power elite the government has been principal agency of social change and good part of social change has been stimulated and directed by government agencies all elite are not committed to communities welfare or societies development many elites function on the basis of vested interest the population explosion the set of goals are handicapped by explosion in our population the direction of social change in india is concerned there has been considerable cultural continuity and with change based on imbibing modern values practices and institutions the traditional patterns have not been held static and modern behavior is commonly fitted into the long standing pattern of action now let us focus on social change with planning planning is adjustment of social institutions to new socio social economic and political conditions certain principles were put into practice to bring success for the development of programs some of the principles are one development proposals and procedures should be mutually consistent two goals of development must be stated in terms of positive values to the community three community must be active partner in the development process the factors of planned change are one five year plans for which planning commission was set up in 1950 for india's development taking an overall view of the needs and resources of the country two the legislative measures a number of legislations and executive measures have been taken for the benefit of various categories of population like women dalits tribals laborers peasants backward caste and classes and so on the important legislative measures are the child marriage restraint act 1929 which restricts marriage for girls below 18 years and boys 21 years and permits divorce the widow remarriage act 1856 permitting remarriage of widows the anti dowry act 1961 which restricts giving and taking of dowry in marriages the untouchability act of 1955 prescribes punishment for practicing untouchability and few other acts the executive measures were abolition of the zamindari system implementation of mandal commission introducing bill in parliament for reservation of 33% seats for women in parliament and state legislatures and reservation of 15% for scs and sts in jobs let's look into urbanization and industrialization the accelerated urbanization was largely the result of industrialization the push as well as pull factors account for the movement from villages to cities where agriculture is becoming modernized and absolute reduction in jobs takes place cities have become a large economies in which determined are 
the inventive people can survive urbanization affected family relations intercaste and intercommunity relations status of women rate of crime and juvenile delinquency etc the urbanization brings changes in workforce structures industrialization has not only promoted urbanization but has also affected social structure and social institutions its one impact is seen on increasing the importance of specialized education which in turn has affected the age for marriage the mature and grown up youths postpone their marriages till they complete their education and settle in life it has given impetus to mobility also the mobility is a marked change of social status it also has affected the means of control informal means have given place to formal means industrialization has led to the growth of trade unions which affected the employer employee relations industrialization has affected the interest and the values of society to such an extent that individuals identity status commitment and behavior have come to be reshaped and reoriented the social reform movements social reform movements in india have not been protest and dissent movements but also reform and reactionary as well as socio religious and freedom movements these movements defined as collective effort to promote change came into origin as uniformity in intellectual orientations social structures ideological preferences and perceptions of truth came into existence till the british period the orientation of social movements was religious but after independence the new situation that emerged led to the divergence in the targets of attack like political authority economic exploitation cultural domination male domination and humiliation of women and so forth this led to the proliferation of diverse movements some of the movements were the tribal movements peasants movements naxalbari movement religious movements backward caste movements women movements etc the women movements the status of women have been the concern of the reform movement before and after independence leaders of brahma samaj and arya samaj were concerned with issues like sati remarriage divorce female education parda system polygamy restrictions on remarriage of widow and non access to education the process of social change to understand the process of social change it is understanding social change through the concepts of sensitization and westernization the concept developed by mn srinivas in 1952 defined sensitization as a process by which the low caste take over the beliefs rituals lifestyles and other cultural traits of those upper caste especially the brahmins in the process of imitation of customs and habits of high caste such practices which according to the present rational standards are considered to be good and functional one the concept of sensitization has been integrated with economic and political domination the role of local dominant caste in the process of cultural transmission has been stressed sensitization is a two way process it took from the caste higher to it but in turn it gave something to the caste we find brahmins worshiping local deities who preside over the epidemics cattle children's lives and crops besides the other gods describing social change in india in terms of sensitization is to primarily in cultural and not in structural terms the concept of westernization this refers to the changes in technology institutions ideology and values of a non western society as a result of cultural contact with the western society for a long period in india the technological changes the establishment of educational institutions rise of nationalism and new political culture are the by products of westernization thus according to srinivas westernization primarily meant the british impact one important feature of westernization is emphasis on technology and rationalism and srinivas prefers the term westernization to modernization one the power and dominance have been integrated with the process of sensitization 
This introduced the structural element in the sensitization model of social change. The process primarily analyzed social change. The cultural and not in structural terms, sensitization involves positional change in the caste system without any structural modification. Two, Western institutions like banking system, public administration, modern medicine, law, etc., were introduced in our country. The Western education broadened the outlook of the people who started talking of their rights and freedom. The introduction of new values, the rational and secular spirit, and the ideologies of individualism, equality, and justice assumed great importance. Three, acceptance of scientific innovations increase the aspirations of people for a higher standard of living and for providing them material welfare. Several traditional beliefs and practices dysfunctional to society were discarded and many new behavior patterns were imbibed. Our technology, agriculture, entrepreneurship and industry were modernized leading to the economic well-being of our country. Four, there have been structural changes in social institutions like marriage, family and caste, creating new forms of relations in social life, religion, etc. The introduction of modern means of communication such as railways, the bus travel, postal services, air and sea travel, the press and the radio and television have affected man's life in various respects. There is rise in the feeling of nationalism. The emergence of vibrant middle class has changed the dominant values of society. Let us study the concept of modernity. We understand that tradition is a set of social practices which seek to inculcate certain behavioral norms and values implying continuity with the past and associated with widely accepted rituals and other forms of symbolic behaviors. According to Stott, modernity represents substantial break with traditional society. Modernity is characterized as emphasis on reason belief in progress, control over nature and environment, the intellectual characteristic, dominance of secular authority and marginalization of religious influence from state or political matters, economy in which money system provided the medium of for exchange, decline of religion and the rise of a secular materialist culture and decline of traditional social order and the development of new division of labor and the emergence of new classes. Thus, modernity refers to cluster of new social, economic, political, religious and intellectual system, which is totally different from the traditional system. According to Anthony Giddens, modernity is characterized as industrialization, capitalism, the production commodities using wage labor for the competitive market and surveillance that is the capacity of state and other organizations to control individuals and the groups. Modernization is socio-demographic aspect or social mobilization as referred by Carl Dews. It indicates some of the indices like exposure to modern life through machinery, response to mass media, change from agricultural occupation, literacy and growth of per capita income. The structural aspects of social organization are specialized roles are free floating. Moore suggests that a modern society has specific economic, political and cultural characteristics. In the economic sphere, it indicates the development of very high level of technology fostered by the systematic application of knowledge, the pursuit of which became the province of the secondary and tertiary occupations as against the primary, growing specialization of economic roles and complexity of the major markets. In the political sphere, 1. A. A modern society is in democratic or populistic. 2. It indicates the decline of traditional legitimization of the rulers with reference to powers outside their own society. 3. Establishment of ideological accountability of the rulers to the ruled. 4. Growing extension of the territorial scope of power of the central, legal, administrative and political agencies of the society. 
in cultural sphere a modern society is characterized by one growing differentiation of the major elements of the major cultural and value systems that is religion philosophy and science two the spread of literacy and secular education three more complex institutional system for the advancement of the media and communication and development of a new cultural outlook emphasis on progress and improvement on happiness and expression of abilities on individuality as moral value and stress on dignity of the individuals and efficiency overall modernization is characterized as temper of science reason and rationalism secularism high aspirations and achievement orientation overall transformation of attitudes norms and values investment in human resource growth oriented economy a national interest rather than the kin caste religion region or language oriented interest and open society and a mobile personality let's look into the measures of modernization modernization is measured according to rusto and ward in terms of specific aspects of change one industrialization of economy and adopting a scientific technology in industry agriculture dairy farming making them highly productive two secularization of ideas three marked increase in geographical and social mobility four spread of scientific and technical education five transition from ascribed to achieved status six increase in material standards of living seven high ratio of inanimate to animate energy used in the economy eight high proportion of working force employed in secondary and tertiary rather than the primary production nine high expectancy of life etc let's look into the problems in adapting to modernization the paradox of modernization is that modern society must change in all ways at once but a regular coordinated pattern of growth cannot be conceivably planned an amount of social unrest is inevitably created the structural change is uneven during periods of modernization for example industries may be modernized but family system religious system etc remain conservative the patterns of change affect the established social and other structures and produce lags and bottlenecks modernization of social and economic institutions creates conflict with the traditional ways of life for example items produced by machinery deprive traditional workers of their means of livelihood many people with traditional and conservative values and attitudes become hostile to people who accept modern way of life often roles adopted by people are modern but values continue to be traditional modernization raises the aspirations of people but social system fail to provide opportunities to them to achieve their aspirations this creates frustrations and deprivations and social unrest thus conflict between the traditional and modern ways become a source of unrest let's sum up social change is natural for every society and even if any society makes an attempt to stall social change that shall be impossible task according to jones social change is a term used to describe variations or modification of any aspect of social processes social patterns social interactions or social organization according to gillen and gillen social changes are variations from the accepted modes of life whether due to alteration in geographical conditions in cultural equipment composition of the population or ideologies and whether brought about by diffusion or invention within the group modernity represents substantial break with traditional society modernity is characterized as emphasis on reason belief in progress control over nature and environment the dominance of secular authority and marginalization of religious influence from state or political matters 
economy in which money system provided the medium for exchange, decline of religion and the rise of a secular materialist culture and decline of traditional social order and the development of new division of labor and the emergence of new classes. Thus, modernity refers to cluster of new social, economic, political, religious and intellectual system which is totally different from traditional system.